Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to finally share how I transformed my small bathroom. Now, when I first started designing this space, I struggled to find ideas that match both the relatively small size of my bathroom and the practical considerations that come with older buildings. So here's a quick refresh. My bathroom is compact, measuring 2,100 millimetres by about 2,700 millimetres with a ceiling height of 2,600 millimetres. There's one west-facing window, which means the room only gets direct sunlight in the afternoon. Diagonal from the window is the door, and the bathroom sits above the kitchen in the outrigger part of the house. So the majority of the walls are brick, which brings its own set of challenges. And speaking of challenges, before anyone mentions it in the comments, I'm well aware that there are moisture issues on our external facing walls. The wall with the window and the one behind the mirror are struggling with moisture at the moment. The ceiling and the internal wall that I share with my neighbour are absolutely fine. And yes, we've used proper bathroom paint, so we think it's likely due to the bad render on the back of the house, which is trapping in a lot of moisture. As part of my upcoming kitchen renovation, I'll be completely removing this render and checking the condition of the bricks underneath. I suspect they'll be in bad shape. Once we address that, we'll re-render properly and then we can revisit the paint and ventilation here in the bathroom. But I didn't want to delay this video any longer. I think it's important to share the reality of home renovations. Things don't always go perfectly or to plan. So one of my main goals for this space was to see if I could fit a walk-in shower while keeping a separate bath. For me, this was important for both my lifestyle and the future property value. I also needed plenty of storage because clutter in a small bathroom can be overwhelming. I absolutely love incorporating organic shapes into my spaces and they've really improved the functionality of this bathroom. The centerpiece is the Lusso Stone Eggshell Freestanding Stone Bath in 1500 millimeters. It's asymmetrical design with one side narrower than the other, frees up more space when you enter the room and step out of the shower. The curved edges also soften the walkway, meaning no harsh corners to bump into. One important thing to know if you're considering a bath like this is that it's extremely heavy. It took my husband and two of our kind neighbors to carry it inside and three guys to get it up the stairs, which was a nail biting moment. Plus, once it's filled with water, it gets even heavier, so our fitters had to check whether they needed to reinforce the floor, which they didn't in the end. But that's definitely something worth checking if you're planning to install a similar bath. I went with the matte finish to match the other elements in the room, and I also made sure to get a matching click clap plug. The default option is usually chrome, so if you're going for a specific look like I did, be sure to customise those details. For reference, I'm just over 5'5 five five and my husband is about 5'10 and we find the bath really comfortable, don't feel cramped at all. One thing I was advised about was the positioning of the bath tap. The fitter suggested putting it next to the window in case we ever needed access, but I went against that advice. Instead, I asked that the tap be placed in the corner. It saves space and I think looks much neater in the layout. I just have to cross my fingers and hope the fitters did a good job. Instead of going for a standard shower tray, I opted for an impy wet room floor former tray, which is 1200mm by 900mm with an 800mm insert top for tiles. This allows the tray to sit underneath and creates a seamless transition with the floor tiles. This not only gives the floor a luxurious feel, but also helps the space look bigger. I know some people worry about water splashing everywhere, but the subtle slant in the flooring directs most of the water straight to the drain. And for any extra splashes, like when I'm vigorously washing my hair, I just use a squeegee to brush the water back into the shower. The cross water glass panels are amazing because they keep the water contained without making the space feel too restrictive. There's even a section that opens if needed. And thanks to the design, we only needed one brace bar on the larger panel. The glass is easy to clean too, just a quick squeegee and it looks brand new again. Plus the clarity of the glass helps you see right through, which again helps make the room feel bigger. I positioned the Crosswater MPRO brass controls so that you can turn on the water without getting soaked. Definitely something to consider when planning your layout if you can. I also made sure their position aligned with the bottom of the shower niche. I was really particular about spacing and alignment throughout the bathroom. For example, I centered the shower head with the niche and ensured the brace bar wouldn't interfere with the water flow from the shower head. The controls are spaced evenly too, making them easy to access and adjust. The niche in the shower is deep enough to hold our everyday essentials along with a few decorative touches. And you'll notice that the shelf height perfectly aligns with the niche and the shower controls, creating a clean, organized look. 
As I mentioned earlier, the wall where I wanted to position the toilet, sink and shower is an external brick wall. To conceal the pipework and achieve the sleek, minimal look of a wall hung toilet and vanity, which also helps lift everything off the floor making the space feel bigger, I worked with a builder to create a custom timber structure. This structure not only hides the pipes but also allows for practical storage like a shower niche and a shelf. Since the bathroom is on the smaller side, I was mindful of not letting the build out take up more space than necessary. After some planning, we found that a 16 centimetre depth was perfect. It was slim enough to maximise floor space while still accommodating all the essential pipe work and it provided enough room to make the niche and shelf practical for storing everyday items. I chose a standard vanity unit from Ikea because the size was just perfect for the space and meant I didn't have to then pay for something more bespoke. To give it a more customised look though, I added crosswater handles to match the other brass details in the room. The drawers are lovely and deep which means they can easily conceal all of our everyday clutter keeping everything tidy and organised. And of course, in keeping with my love for organic shapes, I went with the Lusso Stone Soho Stone Basin. It complements the bath and toilet, which are also from Lusso Stone, tying the whole space together. When it came to lighting, I made sure to purchase my bathroom mirror in advance so I could get the positioning of the wall lights exactly right. It's an asymmetric mirror from H&M, so I knew it wouldn't be as straightforward as a symmetrical one. I'm so happy with how it turned out. The wall lights are from Floss and they give a lovely ambiance while still providing functional light for the space. The ceiling lights from Made and both lights are suitable for bathrooms. Always check the zone requirements when dealing with electrics in a room that's full of moisture. You want to be sure your lighting is safe as well as stylish. I had originally considered micro cementing the entire bathroom and we may revisit that in the future if we run into ongoing issues with the external walls and paint. But when I came across these tiles from Mandarin Stone, I fell in love with them. I wanted to add a bit of a unique twist, so I asked my fitter to create a more interesting pattern by alternating vertical and horizontal tiles. Instead of just running them vertically, we inserted a horizontal tile after each vertical tile, which really gives the walls some character. In the shower, we ran the full length tiles from ceiling to floor, and the bottom row was cut to fit. The great thing is, because your eye naturally looks upward, you hardly notice the smaller cut at the bottom, which are mostly hidden by the vanity and wall hung toilet anyway. I also decided to create a skirting with the horizontal tile to cover the plastering gap between the wall and the floor. On top of that, we use the same beading that's on the shelf and around the niche. You can mitre the tiles if you want to avoid using beading, but I actually love how it turned out. The beading colour blends so seamlessly with the tiles, and it also helped conceal the edges of the skirting tiles, so it was a practical and a style choice. By focusing on layout first and then choosing items that fit within those parameters, I was able to create a space that's both functional and I think beautiful. I love the combination of organic shapes, storage and lighting that brings a cosy ambiance. I hope this video has inspired you if you're working with a small bathroom and as always feel free to ask me any questions in the comments. Remember transforming any space takes time, patience and sometimes flexibility but it's always worth it in the end. If you enjoyed seeing my bathroom renovation be sure to check out my next video where I'm sharing all the details of my living room transformation. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.